So let's see if you can answer this question. Imagine you start out with 10 moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of nitrogen gas. And then the reaction goes, and you find that you have one mole of ammonia at equilibrium. How many moles of H2 are there? So again, pause it, see if you can come up with the answer, and then come back and I'll let you know what it is. No, seriously, you have to pause it and then come back and see what it is. Okay, the key idea here is stoichiometry. So you've got to know your stoichiometry because remember, in a chemical reaction, all that's happening is the atoms are changing how they're bonded to one another. And so we know how many molecules there are of each substance because the change will always happen based on the ratios of these stoichiometric coefficients. So I know at equilibrium I have one mole of ammonia and I didn't start out with any. And so for every one mole of ammonia gas that's formed, I know that that's gonna require a half a mole of N2 and three halves of a mole of H2. And so if I started out with 10 moles H2 and I've lost 1.5 moles of H2, then at equilibrium I have to have 8.5 moles left. And so the correct answer is C. So how are we going to keep this all straight? What we're going to do is we're going to look at a so-called ice diagram or rice diagram. And this is a systematic way to keep track of what you have in a reaction container or what you have in a solution. Is this the only way to solve equilibrium problems? No. Is it an incredibly useful tool to help you keep track of concentrations and numbers of moles? Yes. So feel free to use it as you see fit. So let's imagine our previous example. We started out with 10 moles of hydrogen, and so I've got 10 moles here, and I had one mole of nitrogen, and I didn't have any ammonia, and it didn't say anything about the ammonia, but if it doesn't say you have any, we can say it's zero. The key, key, key idea is that the change is related to my stoichiometric coefficients, because I know the amounts that I start with, I can pick anything that I want, but the changes have to occur according to the balanced equation. So let's imagine a certain amount of nitrogen reacts, x moles. It's disappearing because the reactants are going down in, in numbers of moles and the products are going up. So I'm going to call that minus 1x. Now that's a choice. And I have chosen to make it 1 because the stoichiometric coefficient for nitrogen is 1. And that's just a way to keep things simple. So for every mole of X that I use, or every mole of nitrogen that I use, I use 3 moles of hydrogen. So I'm going to have to lose 3X of hydrogen. And for every ammonia, or for every nitrogen that reacts, I get 2 ammonia. And so it's going to be plus 2X for the ammonia. So then I can imagine what will I have if X amount reacts at equilibrium. So I can just add these two lines together, my initial plus the change. And at equilibrium, I'm going to have 10 moles minus 3X moles. And I'm going to have 1 mole minus X. And then here I'm going to have plus 2X. And so what that tells me is that if this is the way that the reaction is going, I now know how much I have at equilibrium if I knew any single one of these at equilibrium. So telling me one thing lets me know the change for all of the others. So if we think about an equilibrium reaction, what we really want to know is if I'm given these amounts at the beginning, then what are the amounts at the end? That's what we do when we think about chemical equilibrium. We're trying to predict or understand the behavior of the reaction once the system comes to its equilibrium state. So you let it go and go and go until it stops changing, and you want to know what are those concentrations at the end. So a very key idea is that the ratio of the molecules or compounds or ions stop changing, and that ratio turns out to be a constant 
and we give that constant a name. It's given the name k, and it is the equilibrium constant. It is a constant value. That is, it's just a number. It's equal to some amount, 2, 5, 3 times 10 to the minus 42, 8 times 10 to the 13, and it doesn't change. That is, for a given reaction condition, the equilibrium constant is always the same, and thus it's a constant and it's related to equilibrium. It gets the creative name, the equilibrium constant. Now you guys have already seen an equilibrium constant. You've seen an equilibrium constant that we had for solubility equilibria. So for instance, for PbCl2 goes to Pb2 plus aqueous plus 2Cl minus aqueous, the equilibrium constant K, we gave it the little superscript SP, was equal to the product of the concentration of the lead ions times the concentration of the chloride ions squared. This number was a constant. It is the equilibrium constant. And so you know how for a solubility equilibrium to take the reaction and turn it into KSP, the question is how can we do this for a generic reaction? It turns out the process is pretty much the same for a generic reaction. So let's imagine some reaction. Molecule A reacts with molecule B to make molecule C and molecule D. And these are my little stoichiometric coefficients. J, K, L, M. It's one mole of A and two moles of B and six moles of C, whatever it happens to be. The equilibrium constant is just the concentration of the products raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the concentration of the reactants raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. And so for any reaction, that is a way for you to write down some sort of generic um, some sort of generic equilibrium constant. Now I've written it here in terms of concentrations, but really I need to be a little more careful. So the subtlety that we have is we write the equilibrium constant in terms of something we call an activity. So let me do that. We have K is then the activity of C raised to the power L times the activity of D raised to the power M over the activity of A raised to the power J and the activity of B raised to the power K. And then the question is, what in the world is the activity? So the activity is an idea which allows us to define equilibria in different situations and yet still use the same definition for equilibrium constant. So in solutions, if I have something in solution like compound A is in my aqueous solution, then the activity of A is equal to the concentration of my compound A. So activity is just a different way of thinking about the concentration. And if you take more advanced classes, you'll see that there are ways to tweak this concentration for different situations. But for us, activity and solution is just concentration. Technically, it's the concentration divided by our standard concentration of one molar. And so this thing comes out to be unitless and it's very important that our concentrations all be in molarity. So just like we did with all the KSP expressions, our concentrations were always in molarity. For equilibria in solutions, we'll do concentrations, but always in molarity. Now for gases, we have a slightly different situation. And the concentration we like to use for gases is partial pressures. So if I have some reaction that has some gas A, then it turns out I want my activity of A to now have a new definition. It will be the partial pressure of A. And it's not just the partial pressure of A, but it's the partial pressure of A divided by my standard pressure of one atmosphere. And so that means, once again, it's unitless, and this thing I need to have units of 
atmospheres. And so for gas phase reactions, we will write equilibrium expressions using the partial pressures of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficient, divided by the partial pressure of the reactions or reactants. And all of our pressures will be in units of atmosphere. Now, most importantly, what about solids or liquids that show up in a reaction? The answer is the activity for a solid or a liquid, if I have solid A, then the activity of A is by definition just one. It is the number one. And what that means is that all of a sudden, the solids and the liquids don't show up in the equilibrium expression. So why is that? The reason is because they don't have a concentration. A hunk of solid is a hunk of solid, and whether there's 20 grams of it or one gram of it, there isn't a difference in concentration. And as a result, the free energy is always the same for my little tiny chunk or my big chunk. And what we'll see is because the equilibrium constant is related to the free energy, the equilibrium constant doesn't care whether you have a little bit or a lot of a solid. It always comes out the same. So let's give this a concrete example. Here is my reaction. It's got two parts in it. One is solid on my reactant side, and the other is my aqueous solution parts. So I'm going to write out the equilibrium constant for this reaction, K. Very generically, it's the activity of my lead ions times the activity of my chloride ions squared, because I've got a 2 here, so I'm going to square it, divided by the activity of my lead chloride solid. Now I know for a solution, the activity is just defined as the concentration. So this is just the concentration of Pb2 plus in molarity units. And the activity of the chloride ion is just the concentration of the chloride. And it's got to be squared. And then the activity of my solid is just 1. And so what do I discover? K is, of course, what we knew it was, Pb2 plus times Cl minus squared. And just to keep it straight, we sometimes add a little sp here, and that just lets us know what reaction are you talking about. Oh, you're talking about the solubility reaction. But this equilibrium constant isn't any different than any other equilibrium constant. It just gets a little ksp as a reminder of what kind of equilibrium it is. So let's now look at a different situation. Let's imagine this reaction we had earlier. Three moles of hydrogen gas react with one mole of nitrogen gas to make two moles of ammonia gas. What is the equilibrium constant for this reaction? Again, you can take a pause, look it down, see if you can actually figure it out yourself, and then come back. All right, having paused, you should have arrived at K is the activity of NH3 squared divided by the activity of H2 cubed times the activity of N2. And of course, the activity of a gas phase uh, reactant or product is going to be the partial pressure. So it's the partial pressure of NH3 squared, partial pressure of H2 squared times the partial pressure of N2, which is C. Products raised to their stoichiometric coefficient, divided by reactants, raised to their stoichiometric coefficient.